In this video, we review the largest current and future mega projects in the Caribbean and Central America. But before we start don't forget to share the video and subscribe to the channel. Building the first international airport The Dominica International Airport project is located in the northeastern part of the Dominican Republic. It is an island country in the Caribbean region of Central America. The construction area of the project is about 22,000 square meters. As for the main content of the Dominica International Airport project, construction of new 2,850 meters runway, new terminal building, air traffic control building, tower, general aviation hangar, oil depot, fire station, central substation, cargo terminal, sewage treatment plant, garbage treatment plant, health center, procurement and installation communication, navigation and air traffic control systems. It is a 4E airport with an annual passenger capacity of 500,000 passengers. It is the largest project in Dominica and the largest construction project in the region. Port Expansion Kingston A project to expand the port in Kingston will allow Jamaica to remain competitive in the region. The Kingston Port Expansion project consists, among other tasks, in changing all dock equipment, dredging the access channel, reinforcing the soil, recuperating 50,000 square meters of land for traffic purposes, and anchoring new, larger port cranes. All of this work to be carried out at a busy site. The Kingston Port Expansion project represents a major asset for the development of maritime trade in the region since. The port is ideally positioned in proximity to the Panama Canal at the nexus between north-south and east-west shipping lines. As a result, the Port of Kingston will become one of the three leading terminals for container ships in the Caribbean Sea. The Grand Canal of Nicaragua While an interoceanic canal through Central America already exists, the Nicaragua Grand Canal will bring additional opportunities for trade throughout the Western Hemisphere. The canal is estimated to be 178 miles long and 30 meters deep, which will accommodate larger ships, over twice as deep, and three times as long. A canal of this size would be significantly larger than the Panama Canal. Accommodating larger ships through this canal will be a large incentive for several global companies to use it. Building an international airport An international airport would open more opportunities for travel. This development project in Nicaragua is crucial, because it will encourage tourists businesses, journalists and world leaders to visit more frequently than before, simply out of convenience. It is also a means of product movement. Airports create several jobs from janitorial and stock to managing and piloting. The nation would see significant economic change because of its development. BITCOIN City, which will be built entirely around the cryptocurrency. The project, for which the government will offer land and public infrastructure, is intended to attract investors to the country. The city will have no income, profit or property taxes. The only applicable duty will be value-added tax, which will be divided into two parts. Half will be used to pay the municipality's bonds and the other half for maintenance of public infrastructure. The construction of Bitcoin City will be financed through the issuance of bonds, which is expected to take place in 2022. The new city will have residential areas, shopping centers, restaurants, a port, and even mining and agricultural operations. It will be located near the Conchago volcano around 150 kilometers east of capital San Salvador, and will take advantage of power generation for Bitcoin mining. El Salvador Pacific Airport the El Salvador Pacific Airport is a new international airport, set to be built in the eastern part of El Salvador, in the Department of La Union near the Gulf of Fonseca. The construction of the new airport will begin in 2023. The Pacific International Airport is a fundamental part of the economic, tourist, and industrial development of the eastern part of El Salvador. Once completed, the Pacific Airport is expected to generate more than 4,700 new jobs in its first year of operation. The new Pacific Airport will have a big economic benefit to the region. It will increase tourism and create new job opportunities. Also, it will benefit people who travel in and out of the eastern part of El Salvador. An international airport in the Department of La Union will increase tourism in the region. Renovation and Expansion of La Aurora International Airport Feasibility studies have been completed for the modernization and expansion of La Aurora International Airport, the main gateway to Guatemala. The studies estimated the required investment at 128 million US dollars. About 84.3 million dollars of that amount will go to the runway and another 33.3 million dollars for the terminal. According to the report, the other 10 million dollars will be for supplemental work. 
It was expected to be ready last October. The airport modernization and expansion project is managed through a public-private partnership by the Ministry of National Infrastructure CIV. Initial feasibility studies originally estimated the business at US $120 million. Cable Car in Guatemala City the 8.9 km system will have two branches, requiring estimated investments of 1. 4 BN Quetzales. The line will have 10 stations and link the eastern area of Guatemala City's metropolitan area with the Transmetro BRT system. A 6.47 km branch of the system will link the Molino de las Flores neighborhood of Mixco municipality to El Trebol, while the second, 2.11 km long, will be built along the Liberation Boulevard to connect El Trebol to Plaza Espana, another Transmetro station. Each car will hold up to 16 passengers, with the line expected to transport up to 6,000 commuters per hour. The municipality of Guatemala is in charge of project development. Metro Rail in Guatemala Metro Rail is a light rail passenger system. It connects Guatemala City to the center of the city. The trains will run at a maximum speed of 70 km per hour along the 42 km line, completing the track in about 40 minutes. Based on the feasibility study, the train will have the capacity to carry more than 250,000 passengers per day. Construction will require an investment of 770 million US dollars. Artificial Island Guyana's first artificial island being created in the Demerara River is out of bounds, as more dredged material is being added to the still unstable area. The new island is part of the reclaimed land that will be transformed into the estimated 44-acre mega-project to create the shore-based facility which will form part of the port of Reed Enhu. This project will, in the first phase, add more than 44 acres to Guyana's coastline. That phase 1 of the project is meant to be the special-purpose vehicle to serve as a surf. BESHI is currently the largest Guyanese private sector investment in the oil and gas sector, expected to cost over US $300 million. The project is expected to become operational in 2023. Maheka, Guyana will see the development of a USON $0.4 billion real estate project along the Maheka River. The mega project will be located along two miles of the Atlantic Ocean beachfront and bordered by the Maheka River and will have features that include luxury homes, 18-hole golf course, solar power, underground utilities, top security and amenities. Access to the development would be via the newly renovated East Coast Highway or an on-site heliport. That construction would begin on the Mareko Bay Golf and Country Club, the first of two championship PGA standard golf courses. This construction is being billed as Phase I of Mareko Bay, a 1,000-plus acre USON dollars and 40 cents B oceanfront megaproject. This allows for creation of thousands of construction, tourism and sports-related jobs. Panama Metro Line 3 Panama Metro Line 3 is a 34 km long monorail line being developed as part of the Panama Metro project. It will be the largest project in the country since the expansion of the Panama Canal. The line will establish a connection between the province of Panama East and the province of Panama reducing the average travel time by half, from 90 minutes to 45 minutes. The monorail system will be the first to use Japanese technology in the Americas. The first phase of the project will connect Albrook to the Ciudad del Futuro sector, while the second phase will extend up to Lanchara. The line is expected to serve 20,000 passengers in each direction during peak hours with a four-minute interval between trains, while phase two is expected to serve approximately 32,000 commuters by 2050. Panama Metro Line 3 construction will create more than 5,000 jobs, including 800 local jobs during its development, expected to begin operations in mid-2025. The line will benefit more than 500,000 residents of the Panama East Province. Floating Houses The idea is to build a smart homes with cutting-edge technology. These floating homes are the point where luxury, technology and ecology meet. Each house will be 2.2 meters over the water and will span 250 m2 over 3 level. The pods will have a master suite with a walk-in wardrobe, a bathroom, living room, kitchen and patio. Each home will offer panoramic views of the ocean through immense bay windows. The homes will be equipped with software allowing owners to control the lights, temperature and water pressure, as well as the sound system and door locks. The pods range from $295,000 to $1.5 million in price, according to the customization of the home. The first floating houses will be available in Panama by the end of 2023. Ocean Builders expects to build another 1,000 units by 2024. Oratina Metropolitan International Airport 
The proposed Greenfield Airport will be located in Oratina Canton in the province of Valenzuela, approximately 56 kilometers west of San Jose near the Pacific coast. It will be built in an area of 1. 500 ha, covering the communities of El Mastate, Coiler and La Ciba, situated 250 meters above the sea level. The project site will have low impact of wind, which will enable safe flights even in difficult weather conditions. The effect of fog and ashes on the new Oratina Airport will be less than at the SJO Airport. The Oratina Metropolitan International Airport will be developed in three phases, which will involve the construction of a 460 M2 terminal and other facilities. Due to begin operations in 2027, the first phase airport will have the capacity to handle 7.8 million passengers a year, which is expected to grow to 20 million a year over the following 20 years. The airport will be able to handle approximately 50 million passengers at its maximum capacity. The project is expected to create approximately 80,000 direct and indirect jobs. The first phase is expected to cost $1.9 billion, whereas the total cost of the project is estimated to be $3.5 billion, which is expected to achieve full operational capability by 2047. San Jose Interurban Light Rail The Interurban Electric Light Railway planned for San Jose metropolitan area was proposed in 2011, and construction is planned to start in 2021. With inauguration in 2022, the 75 km rail line will connect the cities of Cartago, San Jose, Heredia, and Alajuela, crossing another 15 cantons. Original budget was estimated at USON.23 billion, but feasibility studies will analyze if that amount is still realistic. Some US $600 MN will be allocated by the national government to renew the rail line and install the necessary electric cables. Ponce Paradise the project will be located a short distance from Ponce's Mercadita International Airport, east of the Rafael Cordero Santiago Port of the Americas, will be a full-fledged destination within Ponce. That will include a town center, a marina, a university medical center, a wellness community, an agricultural farm-to-table component, a large hotel and a wellness community, among other. In all, the destination would total 900 acres and could mean as much as $1 billion in total investment. The new megaproject would complement a small, but robust tourism offering, one that includes the Melia Century Hotel, the oldest hotel in Puerto Rico, the home of Puerto Rico's most popular rum, Don Q, and at the Art Museum of Ponce, often billed as the largest art museum in all of the Caribbean is a proposed transportation network designed to service the Port-au-Prince metropolitan area. The project cultivates multiple strategies transported from a series of simulations in which you develop a city through the management of a rail company. The Port-au-Prince Metro is a service expansion plan that builds on the existing bus network and identifies opportunities to add new routes and improve the span on existing service. It is a prioritized vision for how SMART will seek to improve the local transit service through 2030. The five metro services each have a route name, color, and a number for local and letter for express designation representing the particular service. The 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 lines are fully local. The A and E have portions of express and local service. Improving infrastructure in Haiti The Resilient Connectivity and Urban Transport Accessibility Project aims to strengthen the overall resilience of the road network in the South Peninsula by financing road improvements and institutional activities to improve climate resilience. It will improve mobility along selected corridors in Cap Haitian through a low-carbon urban mobility model by expanding conditions for safe non-motorized mobility, strengthening urban infrastructure resilience to climate change and extreme weather events, and improving operations of the public transport system. The project will also support the modernization and professionalization of public transport services in the targeted region. Barracuda Project in Trinidad and Tobago Shell will produce the first natural gas at the Barracuda Project in Trinidad and Tobago. It is one of the largest projects in Trinidad and Tobago. The filling project includes two subsea wells. Both of them are 100% owned by Shell. One well is in the Endeavor Field and the other is in the Bounty Field. Wells are drilled in the Endeavor Field at a depth of 20 feet. Wells are drilled in the Bounty Field at a depth of 16 feet. Peak production from the Barracuda project is expected to be around 40,000 barrels per day, or 220 million cubic feet per day of natural gas. Digitization of the state and the use of technology 
will creation of an institutional and public policy framework for the digitization of the state, with initiatives such as the development of a cybersecurity strategy, updating of service platforms for citizens, interoperability between ministries, a digital identification project, investment in a data center, development of a government cloud and an ecosystem for online tax payments, among others, will support the strategic objective of increasing the contribution of the ICT sector to GDP and consider digital solutions for the development of productive sectors, such as the development of blockchain technologies for the agricultural sector and digital payment systems, use of ICT for climate resilience, the creation of a software developers hub, among others. Which of these projects do you think will be the best in the Caribbean and Central America? And here we are at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share the video and subscribe to the channel.